we welcome you to worship today. And as we do so, we acknowledge that Calvary United Church stands on Treaty 6 territory. We pay our respects to our elders, both past and present, wherever we find ourselves this morning. We recommit to our status as an affirming ministry within the United Church of Canada and strive to be an open-minded, inclusive, and welcoming place of worship. It is our deepest hope that all people might feel at home in this space, and we give thanks to God for this Sabbath day where we join our hearts and minds in prayer. Gentle, perplexing, holy trinity. The images we find in Tree of Life and Awesome Mystery remind us to contemplate once again the paradox that encompasses our faith community. In the Tree of Life, we recognize the cross, the setting for Jesus' execution by political authorities who felt threatened by his radical interpretation of law. We express this day our gratitude that an instrument of torture could be transformed into a symbol of life and hope. This is the mystery. This is what it means for us to dwell within your abiding, all-encompassing love, O Creator Christ Spirit. Within that abiding love, we echo the prayer of community which Jesus taught the disciples, saying in, together in words that are comfortable for each of us, our Father, our Mother, our Parent, our Creator Christ Spirit, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen.
Holy One in Three, you create. You breathe life into the world. You help us shape our living into a reflection of your word and of your hope for us. Be with us, as we pray, as we offer our confession this day. Help us to reflect on what it means to remember. Be with us as we recall those moments when we have contributed to the world's state of the world, which is our joy. Help us to acknowledge those moments when thoughtlessness or jealousy have allowed our prejudices to ruin our actions. Forgive those instances when we have harmed others, knowingly or unknowingly. Fill us with the grace to listen, to the wisdom to discern all that we are able to accomplish within the embrace of your love and the courage to act. We offer our confession rejoicing in Jesus the Christ. Who listens and is forgiven. Amen. Well, good morning and welcome to Children's Time. It's sure good to see you again today. So this is our fifth Sunday of Lent. Can you believe it? We started this journey way back with Go, which is way down here now. And we've traveled for five weeks to get to this point in our Lenten journey. And can you guess what our color is for today? I bet it's not much of a surprise, but let's see if you can guess. I have a banana. Do you like bananas? I like bananas. And a happy face. And a couple of giraffes. A bright shining sun. And I even have a friend here with me today. An elephant. Have you ever seen a yellow elephant? Me neither, but I'm sure glad this fellow lives with me now. So our color is yellow, you've got it. And our heart today says, spread God's light. The other yellow thing I have is a bright shining star. Now, maybe you remember this star from Epiphany. It's our Epiphany star, but it came back to visit us today because I just love light. When I think of yellow, that's what I think about. I think about light, all sorts of light. I think of sunlight and how wonderful it feels when the sky is blue and the sun is high and it's warm. And I think of starlight when it's cold and crisp and you can stand out on a winter's night and look up at the billions and trillions and gazillions of stars shining out there. I just think all these lights are amazing. But the thing I like about light the most, I think, is the way you can spread it around. Have you ever tried to spread light around? It's kind of fun. All you really need to do it is a light source like the sun or a flashlight and something shiny like a mirror. And if you have a light source and a mirror and you shine the light into the mirror, well then you can make the light go anywhere. So I can shine the light over on the giraffes or on my little elephant who needs a name, by the way, so if you have any ideas. And I can make the light shine on the sun. I wonder if I can even make the light shine on the camera there. What's that like? <laughs> and do you think I can spread this light all the way up onto the cross? Let's try. Look at that. I can spread this light far and wide. That's amazing. We're told in the Bible that Jesus was the light of the world and that he came to spread God's light around for all of us. 
He came so that we might understand God a little better, see things a little more clearly, and come to know what God wanted for us to do. And the most important thing, I think, that God wanted us to do was live in the world like Jesus did. And Jesus spent a lot of time spreading God's light and love to all the people. And that's what God wants us to do. Just like the mirror and the light can be reflected, our job as disciples is to reflect God's light and love to the world around us. Now, sometimes we can forget to do this, but I thought we could maybe make a real quick craft today that would help us remember. So all you'll need for this craft is a circle. I'm choosing an orange one and some strips of paper. I have a bunch of yellow ones here. And you'll need some tape and something to write with. So on each of the strips of paper, we can write down things that we can do to help spread God's light. So let's see, how about mm, being kind to others? That would be a good way to spread God's light. So we write on our, one of our pieces of paper, be kind. And maybe another one would be um, be forgiving. That's a good one. Sometimes it's hard to be forgiving. But when we are, it sure makes people feel better. Once we have a whole bunch of ideas, then we take our paper and we'll just tape it to the back side of the circle. And we go all the way around the circle. See, I started like that. And you just tape them all on until you end up with something like this. Now I've written on there, let your light shine. Because sometimes we forget to shine our light for others. But it's really important for us to do that because we make the world better that way. So we can shine our light by saying we're sorry, being forgiving, like we've already said, being kind to others, sharing with people who are in need, being helpful, showing compassion, building people up, and having an open mind. Those are just some of the ways that we can spread God's light all around the world. So have fun making your bright shining sun today, and maybe you can have some fun with mirrors and flashlights today too, and spread some light all over. We'll see you next week. The first reading is from Isaiah chapter 43, verses 16 to 21. Thus says the Lord, who makes a way in the sea, a path in the mighty waters? Who brings out chariot and horse, army and warrior? They lie down, they cannot rise, they are extinguished, quenched like a wick. Do not remember the former things or consider the things of old, I am about to do a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and the rivers in the desert. The wild animals will honor me, the jackals and the ostriches. For I give water in the wilderness, rivers in the desert, to give drink to my chosen people, the people whom I have formed for myself, so that they might declare my praise. The next reading is from Philippians 3, verses 4b through 14. If anyone else has reason to be confident in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day, a member of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew born of Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless. Yet whatever gains I had, these I have come to regard as loss because of Christ. More than that, I regard everything as lost because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake I have suffered the loss of all things, 
and I regard them as rubbish, in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but one that comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God based on faith. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by becoming like him in his death, if somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained this or have already reached the goal, but I press on to make it my own, because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press, press on toward the goal, the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. Our psalm is um, 126, and it has a sung response. When God brought Zion's captives home, it seemed to us like a dream. But then our mouths were full of heart, and our tongues shall 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 Then they said among the nations, God has done great things for them. Truly God has done great things for us, and therefore we rejoice. Restore our fortunes, O God, as streams refresh the Negrev. Those who sow in tears shall reap the shouts of Those who go out weeping, carrying seed for sowing, shall come home with sons of children, bringing in their sheaves. I'll read now from John, book 12, verses 1 to 8. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, the home of Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. There they gave a dinner for him. Martha served, and Lazarus was one of those at the table with him. Mary took a pound of costly perfume made of pure nard, anointed Jesus' feet, and wiped them with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But Judas Iscariot, one of the disciples, the one who was about to betray him, said, Why was this perfume not sold for 300 denarii and the money given to the poor? He said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. He kept the common purse and used to steal what was put into it. Jesus said, leave her alone. She bought it so that she might keep it for the day of my burial. You always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. Hear what the scriptures are saying to the church. May the words that I share with you this day and the ways in which you reflect on these words on your way home and throughout the coming week be for all of us a sign of our love and our joy in our Creator's word. Amen.
So it was a couple of weeks ago now that I opened my Bible to the readings for this day, and I began with Isaiah, who happens to be my favorite Old Testament figure. I think in part because of the poetry that Isaiah exhibits, the, the use of imagery, and that one unique line in chapter 6 of Isaiah where he says, Here am I, Lord, send me, which has been the cornerstone of my faith journey. So I was excited to have a reading from Isaiah until I started reading my particular vert translation of that passage of today. And I came across the sentence, do not remember the things of old. <laughs> and I sat up and I said, I love history. And what is history of not remembering the things of the old in order that we do not make the same mistakes over and over again as some leader in a faraway country might have learned if he had studied history rather than how to shoot people. So I was kind of taken aback this morning when Marge read from her translation and it says, do not consider the things of old. There's quite a difference between the word do not remember and do not consider. And obviously the person or the people, the committee that was doing Marge's translation of, of the Bible didn't like the word remember either. <laughs> Unfortunately for them, the Hebrew word is remember. Although it may be used in different ways. So I start, got to thinking, what kind of ways would we use the word remember as a negative rather than a positive? Do not remember. Think about things that have happened. Learn from the things that have happened, but don't hold on to them. And then I thought about how challenging it is for particularly my contemporaries and your contemporaries to engage in the process of translating from a language that was dead for many centuries and then revived slowly and carefully by a group of people who themselves escaped out of exile back into Israel in the modern era. And now I am on familiar ground because having studied several languages, I understand the challenges of translation. I also understand the use of language by different people. And I want us to bear in mind this morning that when we read Isaiah, if we were to read it from beginning to end, which would take a while, we would notice eventually that there are some differences in theology and in attitude. Those differences come because Isaiah is not a single person. Isaiah is, in fact, three people. The first Isaiah is the Isaiah who lives in Jerusalem and sees the threat of the neighboring armies coming into Israel and what that will mean for the people of Israel in terms of them being taken into exile. And so his job is to prepare the people for this moment when they will be shifted into exile. The second Isaiah, who, from whom we've heard this morning, is the Isaiah who dwells in exile. And the third Isaiah, who is about the last 10 chapters of Isaiah, is the Isaiah who returns back to Israel. Now, you could argue that it is the same Isaiah having the three separate experiences, but there is a clue in the Hebrew to the fact that it cannot be the same Isaiah. And that clue is in the use of language. And to help you understand the use of language, I'll tell you an anecdote from my own life. It happened two summers ago when my email address was hijacked 
by someone in Nigeria. And people got messages from me asking them to quickly send me, I think it was $500 through some kind of a magnetic or whatever you call the thing, thing where I was stranded in Italy. Two of my friends immediately emailed me and said, Tony, did you know this scam is happening? And they both said, we knew it couldn't be from you because there were two grammatical errors in it, and you never make grammatical errors, Tony. <laughs> they knew my speech patterns. They knew my language and my use of language. And in the same way, Hebrew scholars can look at Isaiah and, he, and they can see the different uses of language in the three sections of Isaiah. That's how we know there are three Isaiahs. So here we have second Isaiah in exile. The people are anxious to go back to Israel. And what is he saying to them? Do not remember the things of the past. I wish he'd been more specific about what things of the past they should not remember. And I do like the word consider. I'm not sure it's the correct translation of the Hebrew word, but it's a good translation for where we are today, where we don't need to necessarily let go of remembering, but we certainly need to consider. Consider all of the experiences we've had. Consider all of the sermons we've heard about the same scriptures over and over again, three years after three years. Consider our experiences, our lives, our relationships, our connections. How do all of these inform what we believe this day? And how do all these experiences help us filter through Scripture to come to an understanding of what is it that our Creator wants for us this day and this coming week and this coming month? and so on. So to me, remembering is not necessarily a negative thing. Remembering helps anchor us as we contemplate the readings of the day and look ahead into a future and ask ourselves, how are these readings going to impact us? And it strikes me that you and I and our neighbors over the last two years have been in a kind of exile experience. Sure, we still have access to modern things like uh, YouTube and television and all radio and whatever and, and emails, all of that stuff but we have had less and less of personal contact. Indeed, this is the largest congregation I have seen here since COVID started, which in itself says something. Do we remember what life was like before COVID? I certainly do. I remember having the freedom to just jump in my car and go anywhere and not have to think, oh, did I, have, did I bring my mask? And I cannot tell you the number of times I've reached into my pocket just to be sure my mask is there so that when I step out of the vehicle, I can put my mask on. And those experiences have been multiplied. We do far more stuff now online than we do in person. And yes, it is safer. And yes, for the most part, we get our business done. We've done Bible study now online. But lately, a more and more of the participants are showing up in person. And I really notice a difference because in person you can read body language. There's more to our conversation than simply the words we say online. There is body language, facial expressions, which we can sort of see on the screen, but not the depth of them or the twinkle in the eye or the little subtle movement of the mouth that says someone is actually joking. <laughs> All of those things we have sort of been in exile from for two years. 
So what is Isaiah 2 saying to us? Consider the things of the past. Don't remember them as something that you want to repeat necessarily, but consider the things of the past and ask yourself, how are we going to forge community in the future that will come eventually? How will we sustain ourselves? What things will we bring back? Like the garage sale, the fall supper, more people in the sanctuary and coffee time after the service. They say confession is good for the soul, so I will confess that while I miss Sunday service, I really miss conversation at coffee time. And I am so looking forward to that being back. So we have an opportunity as a congregation, as children of God, to listen to the scripture, to consider the things of the past, and to ask ourselves, what is our future? What will our journey be like this time next year? What will we have accomplished in between? And how will we continue to be the children of God, living God's light and God's love, not only for ourselves, but for the world around us. How good will we be at reflecting God's light to others? This is the challenge. This is the hope. Consider it and remember. Amen. May our Creator, Christ's Spirit's light and love fill us with a willingness to contemplate our own life's journeys as we offer this, our Lenten prayer. Generous, loving Creator, you shape us to live with each other in communities. Today we give thanks for the richness of the experiences that have enlarged our lives and increased our joy. We hear stories reflecting the lives of our ancestors within the covers of the Bible, and we find ourselves engaged anew in faith-related questions. Again and again, we marvel at the ways in which human beings have transformed their personal experiences into celebrations of joy. We applaud the ways in which their faith has embraced the fullness of life from day to day. So it is that we offer our gratitude for the ways in which we also have been touched by those around us, for the ways in which we have been able to discern what you require of us, and for the ways in which our focus remains turned toward the sacred in the midst of a secular world. We rejoice in the ongoing exploration of our Lenten experiences, trusting that each journey offers us a glimpse into the brightly woven tapestry that is your love for all creation. It seems right and fitting to absorb the strength we find in our faith in you and to use that strength to express a vision for life in the world as a whole. Be with us as we seek to address the needs of our neighbors who endure challenges beyond our comprehension. We reflect especially on the people in the Ukraine whose lives have been devastated by a war not of their choosing. We reflect as well on the people of Russia who are suffering the consequences of decisions made by their isolated leaders. We reflect on our own neighbors who day in and day out offer a pattern of care that enhances our living within the relative safety of this community. We are a people who in reality do remember. We remember the biblical stories we have learned over the years, the stories that inspire us and that help us to reflect on our own lives. We remember sermons we have heard and appreciated. We remember unexpected acts of kindness and of generosity. So it is that we offer our thanks for life and for love, for faith and for healing grace, for hope 
and for the courage to dream combined with the will to transform dreams into reality. We thank you, O oh God, in this Lenten season for the grace we enjoy even as we dream of a world that would enjoy the blessings that fill our lives with peace and with hope. This we pray on this Rainbow Sunday in peace and in joy. Amen. Trust in this and celebrate that throughout our Lenten journey, we do not walk alone. Our Creator Christ Spirit journeys with us, nudging us, encouraging us, challenging us, and always loving us. In the heart of that affirmation, may we find peace and hope as we continue on our respective and shared faith journeys with joy and with love. Amen. Thank you.